welcome to the podcast. Hey, thanks so much, David. I'm really excited to be here. Thanks. I appreciate it. So, um, yeah, I mean, could you just like kick us off really just to give a summary of um, who you are and what you actually do just for the, so the audience uh, who's listening? Yeah, for sure. So my name is Ariana Castell. Um, basically, I am a short form video coach. So I specialize specifically in growth on TikTok, but we also do a little bit of Instagram reels, Facebook reels and YouTube shorts. Um, so I'm also an influencer on TikTok. I have multiple accounts that I've grown to over 150,000 followers in a month. And I also do run a coaching consulting company um, called Secret Socials. We offer many different types of products and we primarily help people grow on TikTok um, or on other platforms using short form video. Awesome. Thanks so much. So, yeah, I think a good way to start really is just for you to if you could just give us a, a background of yourself and your early life and then how you got into what you do now. Yeah. So, um, well, I'm currently 19 years old. I just turned 19, um, on Halloween last year and I'm born in California. I grew up there like until I was like seven years old. And then I don't know where my family just decided to like move to Miami because everyone was like moving there. My whole family is a very like family oriented type of family. So we all like want to stay close to each other. So I ended up moving there and basically doing like kindergarten through um, like middle school and then moved to California and then moved back. So I've been like back and forth, um, you know, between the United States. And I always found that I was like the youngest one in my grade. I was basically the youngest person in my grade throughout like across the country. Um, and I was always like the maturest one. So I guess like growing up, I kind of felt like I didn't really fit in super well, just because of the fact that I didn't really understand like the whole like social aspect of like school and high school. I thought everyone was like, just really immature. I couldn't really relate that well. Mm. Um, so once I got out of high school and COVID hit, my life basically changed. Like when I was in high school, I was a very like, I had a lot of like in social anxiety, but you wouldn't really tell because I was actually very like outgoing and social. But I was like one of those people that actually like was really nervous about all of it. But I just kind of used, uh, you know, like just trying to be outgoing to like combat what I was actually feeling. Um, so I guess throughout school, I was very distracted, like with my social life. But once COVID hit, my life basically changed like completely. I wasn't going to school or anything like that. Um, I was doing like online school. So I had a ton of time to like focus on myself. And I kind of just remember sitting on my couch in my dad's house being like, I'm, I was a junior. So that's like a year before you graduate. And right. I was like, Oh my God, I'm literally going to be an adult soon. And I have no clue what I want to do with my life. So I got into like researching online. I was like on TikTok. This is like basically how it almost started everything. I was on TikTok and I was wondering how I can make money so that I can like move out because I was going to be an adult. And I, at the time, didn't really feel like I had the kind of like family that I could really rely on just because at that time, like my family had just gone through a divorce. So my dad and my mom were kind of like in a midlife crisis. So it was just very... I was kind of like on my own a little bit. Um, so anyways, I was like scrolling through TikTok, saw this one guy who was like talking about drop shipping. And I was like, oh, like, what is this? This is like pretty cool. I ended up like trying to do it like on my own um, for like two weeks and kind of like drove myself crazy because I have like an obsessive personality type. So I tried, it wasn't working. I was like freaking out. And then I ended up messaging the guy who I saw on TikTok to actually become my mentor. So he was like my first mentor. Um, his name is Cameron Howard. And basically I paid him to like teach me how to do drop shipping. And at the time, TikTok was like really blowing up, right? Like TikTok was like, you know, a lot of people were going viral. Also like these drop shipping kids were making a ton of money because they were promoting these products on TikTok. They were going viral and like people would just start buying them overnight. So I started learning how to do that. So I started learning how to like create a store, uh, you know, post on TikTok about the product in a non-salesy way to like promote it almost like an influencer. And then um, like, I remember doing that like for two stores, it didn't really work out. And then my third store, which I ended up turning into a brand, it was like a car accessory. And that store ended up blowing up to like 150,000 followers or not, not 150,000, sorry, to 50,000 followers in a week. And 
Um, then like that store basically went from like zero to like $500 days and like to a thousand dollar days. And that was obviously after like some preparation and stuff like that. But that's when I really started like noticing like, whoa, like TikTok is like kind of crazy. The yeah. way that you can just create this account. I can go outside with my iPhone, go to like my old, you know, 2000 Honda car and just start filming videos and start making money. And I was like, whoa, it's crazy. And um, after doing that, after like learning how to do drop shipping and stuff like that, my mentor ended up coming out with a program. So I started actually doing affiliate marketing for his program. So I started teaching people how to do drop shipping and then also doing affiliate marketing for his program. And then I ended up growing that account, which was kind of like a e-commerce, like finance, like motivational page to 300,000 followers on TikTok in two months. And that was really crazy because I had never had like a video with myself in it go viral beforehand. I was actually trying to um, like find side hustles that I can like do online. So I actually started like a few TikTok accounts that were of myself and they were like in the fashion niche and I was doing like depop and trying to like resell clothes and like all that stuff. I've done a lot of other like hustles, like between the time that I was doing drop shipping. Um, and those accounts like never really took off cause I didn't really know what I was doing, but this account ended up going viral, like on the first post. Right. And that was after I had learned how to like, you know, do the products, uh, videos and stuff like that. So that account grew pretty fast. And then that account ended up getting shadow banned. So then I created another page. And that page grew to 60,000 in one week. Like the first video I posted got like 1 million views. And I was like, whoa. And then that account actually got banned. And then so I created my third, I actually created like multiple accounts, but the ones that are still up are like three. But I created my third account. That one grew to 150,000 in one month. And then that's when I decided I actually have a passion for growing accounts. And I'm going to start another account in a completely different niche and it's going to be like on the TikTok growth niche. And then I grew that account to 150,000 in one week. So that so, was really crazy. So so in regards to like timelines, because obviously that, that sounds crazy. And you set up so many accounts and had success, set up an account like success. So from like day one of you going, you know, setting up your first account, doing drop shipping for two weeks and not really working to like, um, yeah, like like where you just stopped then, because um, you already had loads of success. Success. What's the time scale there? Then are we, are we talking like a few months or uh, between those times? I think that no, I think that it was like at least like a year and a half or so. Right. Okay. Like I would grow these accounts super fast, and then I would like take a little bit of a break from posting, or like I wouldn't be trying to scale it as fast. You know what I mean? So for example, like the account that has like 300,000 followers, it would grow, like it grew to that amount in like two months. And then after that, it was growing like steadily. So then like maybe three months later, I was at like 325, you know what I mean? So I think that in the time frame, it was like maybe a year and a half for all of those around there. Mm. Okay, cool. How did that feel then? Like, did you have any success like before this on, I don't know, like Instagram or whatever, YouTube, or was this like your first no. sort of foray into, cause that must've been crazy, right? Just exploding the followers. Yeah. So this was the first time that I had ever done anything like, you know, worthwhile on social media. I just had a normal Instagram, like other people. And actually before that I had took a huge break from social media because, um, once COVID hit, I was really like centering myself mentally, figuring out what do I want to do with my life? I kind of got out of the child mentality and more into the, okay, I got to take things seriously now. So I kind of got off of social media for like personal purposes. And the only reason why I got back on was just for business was just so that I can build my life and, you know, see what I was going to do for the rest of my life. But before that, literally nothing. Yeah. So, so you're like, what, like 16, 17 at this point? Yeah, I was still in high school. So as I said, I was literally the youngest. All my other friends were like 18 years old, but I have been the youngest throughout my whole entire life and basically everything. I've always been like surrounded by older people. So that's kind of why my mindset was there at the time. And then also having COVID hit, I didn't have that social life that I would normally have in high school. Mm -hmm. So I basically like was like, okay, well, I guess life starts now, right? <laughs> It's, it's just find it interesting because, um, well, uh, you, uh, when I was like 
16, 17. I, I do remember because cause we leave um, we leave school at 16 here. We have like a choice. We have uh, um, you can either stay for two more years or you can go to like something called college, which is like pre university. You do two years in college and then go to university. But yeah, I was um, I was more just concerned about like me and my friends were just like waiting to turn 18 so we could drink alcohol and um, you know, like wanting to find a job in a supermarket where we can like earn enough money to buy Xbox games or something. So for you to be like at 16, 17, okay, I need to start a business. It, it, I just find that mindset interesting. Like did, did your other friends like have this then or were you like, where did this come from? Well, this mindset definitely came from obviously being on TikTok. Um, I think that nowadays the people in my generation want to be um, high level business owners. Like, I don't know what it is, but I feel like TikTok and social media and like gurus have really changed like my generation because I see a lot of other people who are my age who are like doing these things. Obviously it's not like the entire population, but there's that. And then also I remember speaking about how like during this time, my parents had just got divorced. So mm. when I had moved back to California, I remember how I was telling you I was moving back and forth. In high school, when I moved to California, I was like living with my mom primarily, and she had never had a job before. Like she was always a housewife. So she was always taken care of. She had never had a job. She never went to college. So she was basically like, you know, an older woman who didn't have a college degree. So she couldn't get a really great job. So she was just like bartending. Mm. And I definitely remember like in terms of money, it just not being very like abundant in the house and like, I just remember like not having money to go do things that my other friends were able to do. Like if I wanted to go to the movie theater and buy a $10 ticket, I couldn't because like my mom, she just didn't have money for like going to get gas to like take us to school. So sometimes we just be like late or we just wouldn't go. Um, so I just remember feeling like really restricted. And that's when I first literally had the exact thought pop up my head thinking, wow, I just need money to literally be free and literally live. And I will never forget that thought that was like, money is like not everything. And it doesn't, it's not the thing that makes me happy, but it's genuinely the thing that you would need to literally like just be free in any way. Cause like I couldn't do anything. I couldn't like go anywhere. Couldn't do anything. It was literally just like beach or like go for a walk. That was it. And then I also went to a school with like in, in California, I also went to a school with like kids who their parents literally owned estates. Like they were like multimillionaires. Some of them were like billionaires. So the parking lot was like full of like Lexuses, like Mercedes, <laughs> G-Wagons. It was just crazy. And I was here, like we couldn't even go to school. I was like, it was also kind of embarrassing too, you know, being like everyone else has this sort of lifestyle. And I like, shop at Ross, which there's nothing wrong with that at all. But when I was like super young, I didn't really understand that. I just wanted to fit in. So that mm. was kind of hard. So that was one lesson that I learned before, um, you know, going back to Miami and then COVID hitting and then, you know, starting my first business. And then also my dad, who was an immigrant, came from Colombia and he was always like very frugal with his money. You know, he was taught from his dad that like, you shouldn't spend a lot. You shouldn't spend a lot on materialistic things. So even though he was successful and did kind of live out that American dream, he was still like, I'm not going to give you 20 bucks. Like 20 bucks is a lot of money. Like you're not getting $20 to go to the movies. I still hear him talk with my sister even now. And she's like, dad, can I have $20 for food? He's like, $20. That's so much money. Why? I'll only give you $5. <laughs> and that was always kind of frustrating for me too. I think that those were like two really big things for me. Having my dad always be the one who I had to like ask for permission to get any sort of like money. And then also him being like very frugal about it. I was just tired of like relying on him, relying on my mom. They were both like not very emotionally there. So I was just tired of the whole situation. And that's basically why I started like actually thinking really seriously about my life. Um, because of the fact that like my social life wasn't there and then I was just tired of the situation. So I was like, okay, like I'm going to go do something about this. And yeah, that's kind of when I decided to like make that change. And then from there, it was just like a learning process. And that's how I got into like finding my mentor, growing those accounts. That's kind of why my mindset was there.
at that yeah. age. Interesting. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a very mature approach. Like a lot of people take a while to get to that point. Um, so, so look, you've, you're like a year, year and a half into this. It's it's going well. How are you like? How are you dealing with this? And what's been the reaction from like your friends and family? Because I imagine like it would have changed quite a lot. Yeah. So I think that at this point right now, a lot of my friends and family look up to me and they really respect me a lot. Um, before it wasn't like that before I was just like a little girl and like they, you know, had their doubts just like families do. I think that the biggest thing for me was like, once I decided not to go to college and just pursue this full time, then I was like, okay, I need to take this seriously. I need to make sure that nothing gets in the way because I cannot fail. Like I literally cannot. So anything that would put me in like the wrong mind space or like, you know, mindset that wouldn't allow me to like produce and be successful or be feel motivated and stuff like that, I had to cut that out of my life. So before they respected me, they were all like, this is not going to work out. You're crazy. Like, what are you doing? So I literally had to like cut them off completely. Like I had to like move to the other side of Florida with my boyfriend so that I didn't have to hear what they had to say and that it wouldn't discourage me. And so that's basically what I did. I moved to the other side of Florida with my boyfriend um, and then just focused like on myself and like on my business and my goals. And then I also like literally just cut off all my friends too. <laughs> and I didn't have like any friends. I had like maybe like two and I think they were like online friends. Um, so I ended up cutting them off too because First of all, we just didn't have like the same goals in life. And then um, second of all, I just didn't have time to be with them anymore. So I didn't like necessarily be like, hey, we can't be friends anymore. It kind of just like they stopped talking to me because I couldn't go hang out with them like very often. So that's kind of like how that went. Um, but I think that was really important because I just said no to anything that was going to stand in my way. I just said no because that's where I wanted to go. I wanted to go another direction. So I kind of had to like make those choices and just be like, no. And I feel like you're probably going to ask me like, how did you know, like just say no during those times so that you can be successful. And honestly, I didn't know. I didn't know like what I was doing and I felt very like anxious about it all the time. And the only thing that kind of helped me through that was like, having a guiding voice and that voice wasn't necessarily like any of my mentors it was literally self-development books <laughs> that was my bible like I, I looked at it as my bible so i would read those things and then i would literally be like this is the bible this is my new truth and i would just follow that to the t because like in when you're doing self-development you're reading books like from bob proctor you're reading think real rich you're reading like all these things um you know, they tell you like, this is the new truth. Like this is what it is. And you have to like, really just believe that and follow that. And that kind of like became like my new, like guiding light. So throughout that whole process, I was just like very faithful and, um, like just really trying to keep my eye on what I really wanted, staying really positive about it, not having like any negative feelings, which I did sometimes, um, because it was like kind of hard because there was definitely a time where I was just riding on full faith. Like, I had convinced myself that I was this person that I technically was not. And everyone was like, you're crazy. You're a liar. Like, like, why are you like acting like this? And I was like, this is who I am. That's who I am like forever. And that's it. Like you're the liar, well, you, you know? So, you move, didn't you say you, did you move from Miami to Florida at this point? Yeah, so Miami's in Florida, oh, Miami's so in Florida. basically, like, yeah, sorry, <laughs> yeah, so Florida's like a peninsula, yeah, no worries. So Florida's like a a peninsula, and then you can go across. So what I did was I just went across to a place called Naples, Florida. So right. I just like went to a different town that was like two hours away or so. Oh, okay, cool. So, yeah, obviously that's quite a lot of change, right? Um, how you, what was mm -hmm. your like your average day like then? Because I imagine when you moved, it was going well, right? Cause obviously you, ne you needed to pay rent and stuff. So you're, I imagine you're having like good amount of success already, but it's interesting that you were still having like doubts and, and stuff. Was, was that about like how long this was going to last or was it like imposter syndrome? Yeah, it was just a lot of imposter syndrome. 
um also like it was still very new right so like with TikTok, especially at that time like things were just popping off for, like from one day to the next so it was still very new also i had just lived a whole entire life where i wasn't this person mm. so i guess like even though i was this person it was just like really hard for me to like accept that and like still see myself that way you know so basically like when i was living in miami i had already like grown my my first personal account um and i'd already like done drop shipping and stuff like that so i was making about like um like profit wise i was probably making around like six to eight grand per month like profit wise and then revenue it was like 25k around there um like with drop shipping and then also like doing affiliate marketing for the courses uh for my mentor and so when I moved over to like live with my boyfriend in that area, the rent was super cheap. He was paying half, I was paying half. And then I was still making pay for a lot of stuff just cause like, I like that kind of relationship. Um, so the expenses like weren't a lot. That's kind of why I did it because I didn't want to have a lot of expenses. All my money that I made, I wanted to throw it into like experiments that I can make more money with. So that's kind of like how the expenses looked like when I was there. Um, but basically I had goals for being more successful that I had to like become. And that was kind of where the imposter syndrome came in. Like you have to kind of shape your mind to be like, okay, no, now you're this new person. You're this better person. Go be that better person. So that's kind of like what that was. Yeah. And then I suppose your like your like lifestyle did, did it not change that much then because you were still so so focused even though you're bringing in all this money that must have been like an awesome feeling right um yeah you... so my lifestyle did not change I still had yeah, i still was driving like my really old car my first car um i still was like very frugal like with my money i never like really spent a lot just because i learned that from my dad i was always like i'm glad that i didn't grow up as like a princess because now I don't feel like I need to go get my nails done. Like, I don't feel like I need to go buy these clothes because I never had, I never got to indulge in that before. So mm. it wasn't like my main thing. My main thing was honestly like save. So I, I've been saving like so much um, over this past like year and a half. Like I just did my taxes and my CPA is like, you were extremely profitable like last year because of like the business model that I have and stuff like that. And because I don't spend a lot. And so when I was, when I went to get my like apartment, like in the future and like my car and all this stuff, they were like, Oh, like you're bringing in this money and only like less than 5,000 is going out. What's happening. <laughs> and like that, that money was like business expenses that we're leaving. It wasn't even like on myself. So my lifestyle didn't really change, but when I went to Naples, it was very interesting because that's when I really had my first like real, real success. That's when I had like my first, uh, I think it was like a $32,000 a month that was like fully profit. So that was like, that was my goal. My main goal was like, okay, I wanna make $30,000 per month. And I had like been dreaming about that basically for like that whole year. And it was, wasn't was till like the end of the year that I really hit it, but it was because I went to Naples. Like entrepreneurs are not kidding about going to a quiet place to go accomplish your goals and i'm doing that right now right now i'm in the barrack islands in europe and it's just so quiet outside there's nobody here um there's not much to do but it's just like great for focus and success and like just to keep it together um but yeah basically in naples my morning routine looked like this i was still like really going through a lot of self-doubt and a lot of like fear of failure that I had to get over. So my morning routine really consisted of me going and meditating until I fell in love with my life, until I fully believed that I was making $30,000 per month. That was like my morning routine. So I would go by this lake that was like near my house where there's like all these ducks and I would just sit in the grass and I would just like meditate and basically convince myself that I'm making $30,000 per month until I genuinely felt it. Then I would go and I would have like my whole thing like listed out. I was like, from 12 to one, I'm shooting content. From this time to this time, I'm working on this course. From this time to this time, I'm filming for this product. Like it was basically like mapped out and I was like really working as hard as I could. Um, and so, yeah, so morning routine was basically like go meditate, go do self-development. Um, I've been very like on and off with like fitness throughout like this whole journey. I know some people will be like, on fitness, but I've been like super on and off about it because sometimes I'll like really prioritize like work over, um, 
like just fitness, which isn't necessarily a good thing. So don't recommend, I don't recommend that. Like, that's not the thing that you're mm. here to learn on this podcast. Um, the second thing that I would do was always go film content always came first before anything else. And it still always come first. Like it's the first thing that I do after like meditation and after like mindset. So I always made sure that I got my content out of the way because if the following wasn't there, if the views weren't there and like, if that all wasn't there, then everything else that follows after that, the sales, the money, like revenue, all that stuff does not come. So I always focus on content first. Um, and then once I finished that, I would do whatever it is I had to do. So whether that be build a new store, whether that be to focus on building like my course for like the first version of the course for secret socials, that's what I was really working towards um, during this time. So that's pretty basically what I was like really, really working on. And it took a lot of time. It definitely did take a lot of time, like meeting, setting things up, especially when it was like time to build secret socials. That's what really took the majority of my time doing the course videos, training the team, um, doing like meetups, like doing a lot of automations to like build out my whole like CRM and like all that stuff. Um, that took a lot of time. And then, yeah, I guess after that, like it was just time to kind of like build that business. So when it came time to do that, I kind of put drop shipping like on the back burner just because I knew that I had a passion for social media versus e-commerce. And I didn't really see myself being able to impact any lives doing e-commerce. I just saw myself being able to like make money, like selling yeah. products that were kind of just like, you know, little like trendy products here and there. Um, I was still like very in the early stages of learning how to build a brand. Um, and so I kind of just like, was like, okay, this is what I really want to do. I really want to help people with social media. I'm like super good at that. And like, that's like what I'm passionate about. So at that time I was like, meh, I'm going to really focus on this. And I also saw that it would be the thing that would be able to make me a lot of money and profit as well. Because like when you're doing e-commerce, it's like 50% of like the product price just goes to like actually buying the product. And then mm. if you do want to scale that and like run ads, then you're, you know, getting even like less profit margins. So I was like, okay, let's focus on this. And so I guess like after two months of being in Naples, I stayed there for a total of seven months, two months being in Naples. I finally finished actually building the first version of secret socials. And then I had my sales team, I had my first sales guy who I found, um, from Upwork and I, he basically lived in like Poland or something like that. His name is Thomas. And we started setting up like the first version of sales calls. I didn't realize, but like, he wasn't very that, he wasn't really that good <laughs> at doing sales, but, um, I was so patient with him. Like I was just so in a, in a zone where I was just riding on full faith and positivity. And it was literally just from like fully trusting in all the things that I was reading from think grow rich, Bob Proctor is just a huge voice in my life. Like RIP, um, huge, huge voice in my life. So I definitely recommend him to like everybody. And yeah, I was just very, very patient with, like Thomas and training him, even though I had zero sales experience, like mind you, I had zero sales experience, like at all. Um, so I was closing some deals myself and he was closing some deals. And then at that point, like, I think the first month that we launched secret socials, like that was a really simple 15 K month, just because of the price of the product that we were selling. Um, and then I brought on my second closer, which was actually a friend of mine who I had helped grow her account on TikTok. So yes. I knew that she knew about TikTok because she had already been like posting on TikTok. But at the time she was like looking for like better ways to make money. So I was like, hey, like this is a great way for you to be able to make like minimum $400 a day, like because that's like the commission prices for the products um, and be able to talk about something that you already know about. So when I brought her on, she was like a natural at closing. She didn't have any experience either. She was just like really knowledgeable about the subject, similar to me. And then basically the team of us three, we basically grew the business like really quickly from like on the third month. I'm pretty sure like we had like my first um, like 40K month or so. It was the second month that I had my first 30K month. So the second, like the, the third month after that, it was 40K. And then throughout the whole year of like 2022, it was like very steady at like 40, 
not not throughout the whole year, but like the beginning, it was really steady at like 40 to 50K. And then towards the end of the year, it started getting to like 70 to 80 cash collected. And then there was like two months out of that year that we did like um, over like 100K in revenue. It wasn't like cash collected, but like that was really great because that was one of my goals to do over 100K per month in revenue. Um, between three of you. Yeah, between the three of us. And then there was a point where like, after we actually started hitting those higher numbers, I actually had fired Thomas because he wasn't like performing at the level that I wanted him to. Um, and so it was actually just me and the other closer. So she was doing like all the calls and I was doing like all the marketing and we just really like had a really good qualification process to where we knew that like we could close at least 50% of the people that we talked to. And then I had invested in a ton of sales training from people like Cole Gordon and um, like Nick Cosman. And I probably like in 2022 spent maybe almost like $100,000 in like sales training. Um, over time, obviously, payment plans. <laughs> but um, yeah, like we had just really tried to dial in our sales process as much as possible and also increase prices. So in the beginning of like 2022, we were probably selling like, Two thousand to five thousand dollar packages, and ending twenty twenty two, we were selling seven thousand to fifteen thousand dollar packages. So that's kind of like how that started to change. Um, we were able to like increase revenue and also like have a more lean team, um, and all really just helping business owners and people grow on social media because it's such a huge thing. And I'm really just kind of blessed because I guess to be good at social media, you just literally have to have that pattern recognition uh, mindset. So just be someone who's able to recognize patterns and you'll be really successful like on social media because it's all about um, learning your audience's psychodynamics. So I actually just created a new training on this, which you're going to get access to, David, because you are one of my students. <laughs> um, but basically psychodynamics is just your audience's mental makeup. So it's everything that builds up this person's consciousness. So it's literally like what they like, what they don't like, what they fear, what they desire, what they see on their way to work every morning, um, what they think about a certain person, who they like, who they don't like. If you think about your friend or like an external person and you ask yourself, what is it? Like, what do I know about them? You're going to think, well, mm. I know they like soccer. I know they go to the, you know, movie theaters every Friday night. I know they hate, you know, this president. They love this president. I know they're like this kind of music. I know they feel this certain way about love, comedy, like movies. That's psychodynamics. So if you know your audience is like, if you know a certain audience is broad psychodynamics, you're able to create like very relatable content um, that really speaks to them to where they're like, whoa, like this video hits like on the dot, like, comment, share with a friend. They're going to think that that same thing like really hits on the dot for them. And then combine that with like the visual of what people like to watch for like short form video. So on TikTok, you know, some really popular stuff is like just some fast paced clips with like some text over it. That's an example visual. And then whatever you write in that text needs to include, you know, your audience's psychodynamics. So something that's like super relatable to them. And I've literally just done a training on this. So it's like fresh in my mind. But um, because I was able to recognize that pattern that, hey, all the viral videos like just are super relatable in like basic terms, just super relatable and to have this look. Okay, let's just replicate that. So now we're like, okay, we just have to make this kind of video visually and then make sure that it relates um, to the audience. And then I was able to really break it down even further through understanding, you know, pattern recognition how can I teach somebody to make a hook that really resonates with their audience um, using, you know, psychodynamics and then also just making it as copy and paste as possible. So then I kind of started breaking down like hooks within a video and figuring out where the places that we can just plug and play people's psychodynamics, you know, so let's say we have a hook on TikTok that says, here's how you can make 10K per month right? The 10K per month part is just a goal that a specific audience would have. So that's part of their psychodynamics, right? If I'm an audience, uh, you know, like, let's say I'm like the finance demographic on TikTok, my goal is to make money. So if I make a video that says, here's how you can make 10K per month, 
then I'm appealing to that audience that wants to make 10K per month. So that's the part that we can like replace and insert, you know, another desire, right? That's like a very like high level, like basic way to explain it. Um, but that's pretty much how I was able to like teach what I knew about TikTok to all these other people, actually be able to get them results and then, you know, be able to scale my business doing that. So that's basically what I've been doing for like the whole 2022 year. I honestly found that um, it was super, super rewarding. Within that year, we actually turned two people into millionaires who were not millionaires within wow. six months. So that was very crazy. Um, I'll talk about them really quick. So one girl, I'll just call her M because I remember she told me she doesn't want people <laughs> to know like her name specifically and then how much money she makes. So I'll just call her M. Um, but basically she was a single mom and she had joined secret socials around the time that you joined David, maybe a little bit before that. So she had joined like in 2021 at the end of the, the year, like around December, she was making only like maybe $200 a week from her jewelry business. So she had an e-commerce business and then within five months. So like within her first month, she had grown her TikTok account to 60,000 followers. But then within five months, she had grown her TikTok account to a hundred thousand followers and then had grown her Instagram account to over 100,000 followers going viral with Reels. So now she had two social platforms for her business that were over 100,000 followers. And she went from $200 a week to making 100K per month within five months. And I remember I got on a call with her because she was like freaking out about something that had happened to like, like some copyright stuff for her like pictures or whatever. Um, and she was like, oh yeah, like by the way, you know, we just had our first like 100K month, like last month. <laughs> I was like, can you say that again? <laughs> can you say that one more time? This is going to be like a great testimonial <laughs> because I was like, whoa, like that's crazy. That's literally crazy. And I was like, I just remember when you were talking about how you didn't know what to do and like how I was just texting you over, you know, iMessage telling you like what videos to post and like, that's just crazy. And then another girl who, um, her name is Elle. I'll just call her Elle, but I talk about her a lot. So her name's Lana. Um, and basically she has like a beauty business. And before she joined, um, she had joined like my one-on-one -on -one mentorship. And before she joined, she was doing like 40 K per month with her business. And then three months or not three months, sorry, three weeks after us working together, she had uh, a 50 K week. So like, basically she had condense the time that she makes her money into a week. And then she started making hundred K plus per month after that. So basically what we did was like, um, first of all, we obviously made her account grow on TikTok, but this is kind of when I started getting in a little bit to like business coaching a little bit. Mm -hmm. So because there's such a huge gap between, you know, growing on social media and monetizing it, I kind of started closing that gap a little bit with teaching people like how to build their own courses teaching people kind of how to build like really basic e-commerce businesses so they can like start monetizing their followers. Um, and so for her, she wanted to learn how to make like passive income with her online course. So we created like an evergreen like webinar funnel for her. And I basically taught her how to like do the webinar, um, how to promote the webinar, like how to go viral and promote the webinar, get people to sign up, all that stuff. And basically like she did her first webinar and it was like a $35,000 like webinar in 24 hours which was really crazy. And then after that, she obviously hit that 50 K um, like Mark in that week. And then after that, put that webinar up consistently and was generating like $50,000 a month passively from that webinar. And then just doing like the marketing practices that we talked about, like for TikTok, and then plus her, um, her beauty business, which was generating her like 40 K per month, um, a little bit over that. So she was doing like a hundred K per month plus just with, literally like a three week period. So that was really crazy. So yeah, that's basically like how we're able to get people to be able to get those results. Like in terms of posting content on TikTok, it really all comes from being able to um, leverage your audience's psychodynamics. Because if you really like watch TikTok a lot, I was watching it the other day um, because I was creating these new lessons for the TikTok insider students. And it was crazy because TikTok is literally just a platform of people creating videos that are just describing themselves. And then people like and comment and share on these videos because they just resonate so heavily with it because it's relatable. And 
these videos are basically just describing themselves. Like I'll, I'll talk about a specific example. So sure. there was one video that I had came across and it's actually in the lesson. And it's pretty much a video who, of this girl who's like dancing on this table. And the caption on the video says, little miss wants to find her dream husband, but picks guys who only want her for like a one night stand. And then like, it's just basically this like relatable paragraph. And I'm like, why did this video go viral? Because people who are watching this video and it's coming up on their For You page, they're like, me, like. Mm. So basically, if you can just describe your audience in your video, like that video is going to do really, really well. I did a video where it was literally like, Pav, you spent three hours on the TikTok and it only got 300 views. I just described my audience, like basically just described the people who were struggling to grow on TikTok. And then they all started like liking, commenting, sharing. Boom, that video got like 400,000 views. So like, that's what I mean. If you can describe your audience's psychodynamics and do it in like multiple different ways, like that's really the secret to going viral on TikTok, other than actually just being a good creator and knowing how to visually create the content. Because there are people who create very high level videos, but they still don't go viral because they're not hitting that part where like it's actually resonating with the audience. So an easy way that I used to teach like psychodynamics is um, just thinking about stereotypes. Stereotypes is a great mm. way to think about psychodynamics because they're stereotypes for a reason. Um, also, once you actually like deep dive into a specific niche, you'll see what people say in the hooks of their videos. And that typically will showcase some sort of psychodynamic, right? Um, so just like the examples that I talked about for those two videos, you know, the one that I created that was talking about how you spent three hours on a video and it only got 300 views, right? If I was doing research on my own space, I would be like, wow, okay. So that's a pain point. Like that's a specific situation and a specific pain point that this audience has that every time I see somebody talk about that specific pain point, their videos get a lot of views. And so that's a really good example because whenever I like use that example in my own videos, they always tend to do really well. So that's kind of how you would leverage your audience's psychodynamics in a video. And I would argue that that's probably like one of the most important things mm. uh, because of the fact that when there's a video that actually has something good to say, quote, quote, good to say, or that leverages psychodynamics really well, it does really well. But when there's a video that's like super highly uh, like created, has really great camera quality, just very aesthetic, like it doesn't do well, it's because it's not hitting that thing that's like resonating with the audience. So I think that's a really huge takeaway for just any niche. Um, do your research on psychodynamics. You can, there's probably tons of videos on it on YouTube and then really start leveraging that in your videos. And I think that the place that we leverage psychodynamics in your videos is in your hook, um, in storytelling, in, uh, in the topic of the video as well. And then whenever you're doing trends. So a lot of TikTok, again, is just really shareable, relatable content. Like that's what TikTok is like really known for. Um, and that's why there's a lot of like these trends that are kind of like two-step trends. So it's usually like a situation or, um, yeah, it's usually like a situation in the first part of the trend. And then after is usually like that person's reaction, solution, or result. So I'll give you an example. Situation. Um, when he tells a story and mentions another girl. And then the second part of the trend is like some girl's like reaction, her being like, you know, mm -hmm. and they're usually like those like very like short five second videos that just like pff, blow up. Like, cause it's typically basically just people really wanting to just see themselves in a video, like comment, share, share it with a friend. Like that's really like what TikTok is. And then so the way that we use that for psychodynamics is we think about what's a, I like to do a lot of pain points because I find that those typically always hit and it's not as confusing for the students. Um, so let's say we just want to insert our audience's daily pain point, right? So that would be, let's say like for sales, right? Because you know a lot about sales, David. So let's just say for sales, um, spends three hours on a sales call and the customer says they want to think about it. You know, mm. like it's a daily frustration that like, all salespeople have. And then afterwards it would be like some sort of reaction or you would show like some sort of website that's like simple, fast solution, right? Like 
for example, I just saw a really viral TikTok ad the other day, and it was basically this girl being like super shy and not being able to make friends. And then it just switched to the next camera, like with a screen recording of her phone. And it said notifications like, you just made a new friend. You just made a new friend. You just made a new friend. And it's an ad for like a friend making platform. But do you see how it's kind of like relatable daily frustration and then the solution result or reaction? Like that's just a yeah. really easy two-step trend format that goes super viral on TikTok. And you're going to see that with a lot of niches um, with just the relatable niche, which is usually like for influencers um, with fitness, with TikTok growth, with finance, with basically all the niches. Like that's like a huge viral video format on TikTok. So that's how you would leverage psychodynamics in that. So if you can just basically learn the way that you have to like create the video, like the little format, and you can just insert your audience's psychodynamics, your videos should technically like perform really well. And that's what we see like with a lot of our students. So what's like, what's like common mistakes that, well, creators, but also companies make? Um, because, you know, a lot of companies spend thousands, if not hundreds of thousands on their marketing and, you know, they only get like a thousand views. So what, what, what do you see then that people do commonly that, that just doesn't work? Yeah. So I think that for um, companies and brands, it's totally a separate set of, a strategy than for like people, coaches, influencers, creators, or like people who have personal brands, it's honestly a totally separate strategy, but um, biggest creators, like biggest mistakes that creators will make. So people is they will really let themselves get discouraged by their views. I would say the biggest mistakes come from mindset. And I know that sounds super tedious and like just, okay, like we've heard it, but mm. I've coached a lot of people and you wouldn't even know like how much just themselves, like they just get it in their own way. It's just really, really crazy. So I would definitely say the biggest mistake is letting past views discourage themselves from creating new videos, right? So their last video like did bad and now they're just like not really motivated to create another video. That's definitely the first one. Um, I would really say not taking the time to understand in depthly their audience's psychodynamics. That's a big one because their biggest struggle is like understanding how to create content. They don't know what to put for their hook. And it's like, if you understand your audience's psychodynamics, it gets really simple. It's like insert here, you know, mm -hmm. for the hook. So I think that it's really just people, um, not taking the time to really, really learn what I'm talking about, um, and implement that into their content. Because again, as I said, it's like as simple as just learning their audience psychodynamics and then finding the different like formats for these TikTok for the viral TikTok videos, which a lot of them are just like two step formats, you know, it's like this situation and then the after, like that's most of, that's literally like what a trend is. Like that's the typical trend format on TikTok. So even if they just created a ton of videos just like that, like those videos will typically perform because it's the majority of viral videos on TikTok. Um, so I really think that it's the mindset, not taking the time to really implement. Um, and then, because I think it's like some sort of, I don't know what it is because like you say it and then the person feels like they understand it. But then when it comes time to implement it, they kind of revert back to the, what they normally do. So I think it's like really allowing yourself to take a different approach to what you've been trying to do before. Mm. Hopefully that makes sense. Like stepping out of your comfort zone sort of thing. Yeah, definitely. And then also like deliberately trying to take a different approach and like do something new. Um, because I know the feeling of getting into a routine and doing that consistently and then deliberately allowing myself to do something new and kind of get outside of my comfort zone. So that's a really big one. Um, another one is obviously, you know, I mean, just the basic stuff, like making their videos too, um, like slow, not really fast paced. Um, also not having that really clear thing that they're trying to give in the video. So like that clear, um, piece of value that they're trying to give. Sometimes people will just kind of like get on the camera and like not really say much or like do much. Mm -hmm. I really like to give tangible value in the video. So that means like websites, statistics, like 
things that people can really walk away with and say, oh, that was valuable. And that's typically like tangible stuff. So um, I think that a lot of creators sometimes would like just get on and kind of just talk, um, but not really give tangible stuff to where their audience could be like, I'm going to, I'm going to save this so that I can watch this later. Um, or like, thank you so much. Like this was so valuable. So that's one, but yeah, I think realistically, it's just not understanding the format that they have to use and then not understanding how to create good content, which just comes from not understanding your audience's psychodynamics to be able to insert that into your hooks or create good hooks that really resonate. I think that's the biggest thing. Awesome. That's re it's really, really interesting. And it's, um, it, it's a very, very complex subject, right? Uh, but it, it seems like once you crack it, you sort of hit into like a momentum of flow. Yes, definitely. I'm, I mean, I think it sounds kind of complicated because the word psychodynamics, that sounds like complicated, but it's really just like your audience's mental makeup. And then what happens is that you make a list of like the six things that really resonate. And they're typically like six phrases or like topics that really resonate with your audience that every single time you talk about it, they're just like, they can't stop watching. Mm. Um, and then you just kind of insert that into your videos. And then a lot of creators, like they build a routine. So let's say your routine for your content is just to insert, you know, one of the five things that your audience like always can stop scrolling about. And then you just take that with the two-step viral format for like your video. Then it just kind of becomes like, okay, what format am I going to use? And then what psychodynamic do I want to like take for this video? What, like what, which one do I want to use for this video? So I'll kind of give you an example. Um, for my space, some psychodynamics that come to mind is like always the amount of time that they spend on the video versus like the amount of views that they get. Um, another one is like, you know, letting themselves get discouraged by their views. Every single time I talk about that, that's really important. Um, another one is whenever I mention TikTok 2023, pff, those videos do really well. Um, whenever I mention like, for example, a creator, Alex Earl, like those videos do really well because everyone's like talking about how she's like a really great example. So it's kind of like, you will learn those few things that you talk about that always do really well. And then you just insert them into that specific format of the video that you're always going to do. So for me, my formats that do really well are like those viral two-step type of formats because those are super viral on TikTok. Um, but also my audience tends to really like me just talking to them and like really showing like my personality into it so that they mm -hmm. feel like I'm just speaking to them over FaceTime. Um, that's something that does really well for me. And then if I'm giving a, some good advice and I'm just being like really animated as I normally am, then that typically does really well too. And, and with these, like, um, once you've, you figured out like the sucker dynamics and the hooks and everything, how, how do you recommend, recommend you like organize these? Like, is it, is it simple as like having a Google doc and just checking it every morning and then making the content or have you got like a certain system that you use? Yeah, definitely. Um, I guess to like make it simpler, the best psychodynamics are usually like daily frustrations that your audience have. It's usually the daily frustrations. It's usually like common situations that they're in. Like for psychodynamics, you really want to think about daily life. You don't want to think about like overall pain points because if you do a video that's talking about, this is why you're not making 10K per month. It's kind of like, it's an overall thing because we're talking about months. So mm. I think that for your psychodynamics, if we can just like, if you could just take a few things from like this podcast, this would really be it. You really want to talk about like daily pain points and frustrations that they have daily situ whether, whether that's good or positive. So like daily good situations or daily like negative situations that they, that they deal with, um, common situations that they run into. Um, and then psychodynamics also comes from like, you know, popular places, peoples or things. But I think that those are honestly like the biggest things, right? So the relationship example that I gave earlier, which the girl was saying, when he starts telling a story and he mentions a girl in it, right? That's kind of like a situation that would be in like the moment of now, you know, it wouldn't be like a monthly situation. So if you can talk about things that are like daily things um, 
and then provide some sort of like solution result or like reaction to that to where they can like relate to their reaction to that situation. They're like, oh yeah, this is relatable. Then that's like the perfect way to use your audience of psychodynamics. Honestly, I don't really go outside of that super, super often. I find that those two things are always like the best ways to relate to your audience. So I'll give some examples for like other niches so you can see how it plays out. So um, let's say like the beginning part of the video is talking about how um, somebody's been using like the gym equipment for so long. You know, it's like um, that one guy who's been on like the deadlifts like for 20 minutes. And then it's like, the equipment sort of like, yeah, then it's like some sort of like solution. Like, let's say you want to do a solution instead of like a reaction. Cause the reaction stuff is like usually very relatable stuff. Let's say you want to do, do a solution. So then the next part of that video is like the girl going up to the guy like with her microphone and being like, hey, like, you know, let's, let's say she totally called him out on like something that he was like using that equipment forever. Right. It's just like a simple 10 second video, but everyone in the comments is going to be like, Oh my God, like for real, totally share this because like now they're, now they're almost imagining themselves in that situation where the girl's like, this guy's been using this equipment forever. And then she goes up to him and actually like tells him to like leave. Then some other people mm. would share that with their friend and being like, we need to do this next time or like us, lol, you know? So like, that's what I mean by TikTok is all about shareable content. And then if you want to be educational, you got to find that um, way to deliver it. Like, I really think that education being delivered in the form of like trends or right now cap cut templates is like really great. But let's do another example. So let's say for um, the finance niche right? Let's say like we're talking about trading crypto. It's like, boom, just lost, you know, um, like $200 on the stock market. And then the next one is like next day, you know, gained 500. It's like, it's kind of like a relatable situation. Cause like one day you'll lose the next day you win, you know? So it's like a very short video, but it's like super relatable. People will share that. Or it's like, um, Pav, you just lost $200 on the stock market. And then the next one is like what you should do next. You know what I mean? Like, Mm. Or Pav, um, this coin just like this coin, Pav, this coin just dropped and now I lost two hundred dollars. And then the next clip is like um this person like analyzing the chart and be like, the chart's about to go up, you know, so it's like kind of like the solution. Or another one is um like let's say you're in like the study niche because there's so many niches on stick on TikTok. And the beginning part of your video is teacher just gave me a five pay page essay and the person's like and then like the next screen is like chat gbt and like right it's like a smiley face like and everyone's the comments it's like oh my god thank you so much or like or it shows chat gbt and then it shows like him populating his whole essay so you see how it's like problem solution um it's like a daily problem though that people would genuinely find valuable because it's a daily issue so um some of the some of the psychodynamics that I'll use in my own videos as well is I want to post on TikTok today, but I don't know what to post. Right. That's like a daily problem that people have. And then so I'll like the next thing will be basically like a few video ideas that they can post today. Or it's like, I want to grow on TikTok, but I can't stay consistent. You know? So a lot of the times like you want to use your audience's own words in the situation. The more you can do that, then that's also a really good tip. Sometimes I'll even just quote them. Like I want to post on TikTok, but I don't know what to do. And then I'll just go to the next screen and like show like some video ideas. So I think that yeah, like the daily frustrations or like the daily positive situations or just daily situations in general um, is really, really good. And then having some sort of like reaction solution or like next step um, as like the next part with a trending sound is like honestly like one of the biggest formats like for virality like on tiktok for like the for the people niche for the creator influencer coach um like personal branding niche like that's the best and then for uh brands and companies it's a whole other thing so for them right now on tiktok people don't want to oh well here's what i teach inside the program like on a higher level right oh. first you gotta figure out um is your product a viral problem solving product or is it just like a regular product or your regular company brand? Right. And what I mean by like viral problem solving product is like, would it be something that's shareable that people would want to share? And, 
an example of this is we have a app um, that's in our program that's like doing super well. And they were basically doing some research. They found this other app that's basically a date idea app, right? That's a fun, shareable app. So then cool. You can literally make videos about um, the app itself and then that will go viral. But not all companies are in that situation where like the product itself is going to go viral, right? So for other companies who are not in that situation, then TikTok wants from you, honestly, entertaining content. Like the biggest brands that are doing the best on TikTok, they just rarely even talk about their products. And what happens is that people fall so in love with their TikTok accounts and so in love with them because they're so on TikTok culture. So mm. like, you ever heard of like Duolingo? Um, yeah. They're like one of like the biggest like apps like on TikTok and people like the Duolingo account because how funny they are and also like how on culture they are. You know, like people are just in awe about how well that this company is following the TikTok trends. Yeah, because they I mean? leave like really funny comments, right? I've seen them before actually, yeah. like, yeah. Exactly. So that's like a huge thing for these companies who don't necessarily have like a viral product that they can like promote. Um, your strategy on TikTok should really strictly just be about awareness. And then you can figure out some ways to kind of sell the features of your product within that awareness strategy. But you really want to focus on like just kind of being that company who gets TikTok culture and people will just watch your content for entertainment or it's really entertaining just because you're a company who's like using these like really non-corporate trends. And that's what people really want on TikTok from these companies. Um, and yeah, basically that will make your account go super viral. And then obviously because it's going so viral, people are talking about how, oh yeah, like, did you see this company's like posts? Like it was so funny. It was using that trend, like it's kind of unhinged. And then eventually it'll just be like top of mind for everything because like mm. they know you so well. So it's kind of like an awareness strategy where, for example, Duolingo, um, while I'm sure that their TikTok account is like obviously bringing them a ton of downloads because of how many eyes that they're getting, um, it's not technically like talking about, you know, um, how good their product is or anything like that. But because people are so infatuated by how funny the account is, there's just so much attention on it and awareness on it. Now, when you think about language app, the first thing that comes to mind is Duolingo. And if you can be the first person that comes to mind when they think about a certain thing, then typically you will be the one who gets those downloads or um, gets those sales, regardless if you even told them why your product is good or not. It's kind of just like, yeah, like whoever comes to mind first, like gets the customer because it's like mm. what they're aware of. So that's the strategy that you want to go for if your product is in a super like virally product. Um, and then something that's really big for brands like that right now is CapCut templates. Um, and it's a really easy way to kind of like make viral videos. And then you kind of just want to figure out like, what can you say about your specific product? that would be kind of funny or like unhinged you know what i mean so um let me give an example hmm. yeah like so some of these accounts will literally sometimes they won't even like talk about their specific product but they'll just do like unhinged content that includes the product sorry that's what I, that's what i was really trying to say um it will just include the product so for example for duolingo duolingo has like the mascot so that's the way that they're incorporating the product but the mascot is just doing regular TikTok trends. But because it has the Duolingo mascot, technically it's like giving awareness for right. their company. Um, another one is like, there's like this one company called like Teslara. It's basically like this phone booth that gives free Wi-Fi on TikTok. And they're also like really popular. And basically all of the content on their account that goes viral is basically just content of a picture of like their phone booth using cap cut templates and then talking about how um their boss is like asking them to make tiktoks and then this is what they're producing so that's a huge strategy right now on tiktok right now to be like boss make a tiktok and then it's like me and then it's like some like really corny edit like using the picture of like the product so that's like basically what i mean by creating like entertaining content that's kind of like just funny and it's like oh yeah like the brand is on tiktok type of content um, so that's what I would do like for companies right now, you really don't want to like create content around 
you know, the product because unless it's a very well-known product, then it might work better. So for example, like Ryan Air will create kind of like meme style content about how cheap their flights are and how cheap everything mm. inside of the, you know, flights are, right? And that's kind of like funny and unhinged and also relatable sometimes because people actually know about Ryanair, but for another startup company that I was working with, nobody knew about them. So they had to figure out another way to basically like make them go viral. And um, luckily they did have like a viral feature that we could like promote, which is basically what like we're doing. But um, for the companies that don't like for the phone booth, they're just going the route of like it being funny because it's a phone booth company that's like doing these really cringy like trends, you know, and like their account has like a million plus followers. So that's kind of the strategy that you want to go right now if you're like, uh, you know, startup and like it's not like TikTok viral type of thing. Um, then you want to go for that like awareness strategy. And then if you do have something that you can promote to where it's like shareable and like cool, then you can do that. Another thing that other people have done is like just created a community of influencers on the platform who could use that platform um, and then like promote it like that. So that's another strategy as well. Awesome. That's tons and tons of value, Ari. Um, yeah, I, th I think yeah, um, top, I think people... Top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i mean what would be interesting just to sort of close this off i suppose would be what's the what do you feel like the future is for like tiktok social media but also you know for yourself as well like what's your future plans yeah so i honestly think that tiktok has like completely changed social media like completely i think that short form video is like obviously one of the most popular things especially for the younger demographics such as like myself um so I think that, yeah, everything in terms of short form video is going to like live on for literally forever until like the next thing comes out. Um, but in terms of myself, what my main goal is right now is basically just satisfaction and like fulfillment, right? So my main goal as an entrepreneur is to be able to like make my, make more money for less of my time, but also to be able to help more people. So um I've luckily been able to have like the mindset where I've always understood that money never equals happiness. And so everything that I've done has come from a place of like wanting to help the other person um, because that's what really brings me satisfaction. So now I really just want to help more people and be able to personally, like I, the way that I envision my life is like, I get to wake up and my job is to literally like help a ton of people. While I might not be talking to them specifically one-on-one, -on -one, I'm still there as like the overall voice that they can listen to every single day, right? Like you don't see Tony Robbins doing a ton of one-on-one -on -one client, but like clients, but he's still helping a ton of people mm. um, and like impacting their lives, whether they're like, he knows that that person even knows about him. You know what I mean? So that's kind of like where I'm going right now with my business and what I want to do. I want to affect more lives. Um, and so that's kind of bringing us to where we are right now, which is we just launched our new learning platform. So Secret Socials just came out with TikTok Insiders. And basically that's a community for people who want to grow on TikTok. And then um, also we do have, you know, programs where you can learn how to monetize. So you can learn how to create a community. You can learn how to create and sell your course passively. You can learn how to do high ticket coaching and also do sales calls. You can get sales scripts. You can also learn, um, about how to like build like basic e-commerce businesses, social media marketing, um, like UGC content creation, like basically really how to like monetize yourself. And why I'm really, really excited for this is because there's just so much value being provided um, in this community in terms of like, I am a person that likes to spoil like my students because I'm so grateful that they invested in me and that they're allowing me to help them. So I'm already envisioning like all the bonuses that I want to give people like once they're a part of this community. So obviously like the community is including like you have to join in one of the programs, get one of the courses and be able to start learning, but also you have this community to where you're able to like network, get your answers, you know, like get your questions answered. Um, and I can already see myself like giving so much value in terms of like free extra lessons. Like I want to send out email blasts where I'm giving people like just Amazon gift cards because they deserve it. Um, like winners who can win bonuses to join like our membership, which is where we do like our more hands-on coaching and stuff like that. It's obviously like more pricey it's not necessary to like get results, but it's just for people who aren't necessarily like self-starters. Yeah. 
and like free memberships to that for being active and also helping other people inside of the community. So my main goal for that is really just to um, build up a place where I can like personally impact a lot of people's lives consistently and like give my love because I'm like a very like loving person. Um, I would like to do that and eventually help like 10,000 people this year. And that's like my goal. Last year, I helped like 300 people personally, and it was like more like a one-on-one -on -one, um, situation. This year, I want to help a lot of people and help them grow um, on more of like a higher level. And then on the more personal side, I actually want to retire my mom this year. Like that's like my big goal. And I want her to be able to like have a position where she's really happy in. So outside of this, like I'm really into obviously like investing and stuff. So I want to get into like Airbnb this year. And I want her to like run that because she's like, she's always been like a mother, you know? So I know that with these Airbnb listings, first of all, she's going to get half of like everything. She just has to be my mom. Like she gets half. <laughs> and then, um, to also be able to make these Airbnb listings a home because that's what she's always been so good at. And then mm. she gets to go live her life right now because as I said before, like she, you know, never had a job before. So if she doesn't work an amazing job, I don't think she likes what she does. And I can see her, like, I feel like she, her main purpose on earth is just to, like enjoy. And so me being able to help a lot of people is all also going to go to being able to help her at the end of the day as well. Amazing. Look forward to uh, hearing about it. Yeah. But, no, um, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah no, no, thanks so much for coming on. I think, think that's all like, there's so much value there. Um, I think people can listen to this and um, yeah, re I think it will really change how they uh, approach social media um, in terms of like, how people find you. So uh, what's your websites? What's your social socials? Yeah. So um, our website is secret social.io. So it's S you know, basically secret social.io. That's our website. Um, you can go there. You can check out all the packages that we have in terms of like any courses, programs, communities, uh, memberships. You can find that all there. Also, if you're already a TikTok insider student, that's where you can go ahead and log into our community and also to find your package. Um, my Instagram is Ariana Castell. So A-R-I-A-N-A-C-A-S-T-E-L-L -L underscore. And I always post a ton of crazy value on my stories um free products on my stories as well so if you're someone who's like ariana that's great i would love to join the tiktok insiders but for now i don't have the budget or i want to start learning like for free first then you can definitely find a lot of free products there um that's also where i post like my free training so i also do like free like master classes so you can go find that there as well and then my tiktok where i post a lot of amazing free TikTok tips that are a little bit more in depth because people on my TikTok really love to just like hear me like teach. Um, you can find me at secret social Ari. So it's the same secret social and then A-R-I. And then that's basically just the TikTok username. So those are the three places that you can find me a ton of um, amazing free value that you can get even before you decide to join, you know, any of our programs or become, you know, a more higher level student so that you can start learning, learn our teaching style. But I think you're really going to enjoy a lot of it. Um, even just like being a follower or watching the stories. Awesome. Yeah. I'll make sure I put all the links and everything below anywhere, wherever you're watching this or listening to this, you'll find the links in the description, but, um, but yeah, thanks so much for coming on Ari. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks, David. I had a really good time. I really appreciate it.